Osteogenesis imperfecta is a bone disease. It is also called as Lobstein's disease, named after Lobstein who found the etiology of this condition. Here the bones are fragile and break easily, so it is commonly known as brittle bone disease. Dentists need to know this since it is associated with a condition called dentinogenesis imperfecta, where the dentine formed is of poor quality. Osteogenesis imperfecta translates to bone formation in the body that is imperfect, which leads to extremely fragile bones. Let us look inside the bone. This is the normal bone with the cortex and medulla in the middle. In OI, cortex is thin, medulla immature and spongy. Due to this, multiple fractures can occur without any apparent cause. And the fractured bones heal readily but are of poor quality. And this is because of poorly formed type 1 collagen, which is the main component of the extracellular organic matrix of bone, tendons, cornea, blood vessel walls, skin, teeth and many other connective tissues. So in OI, all of these may be affected giving certain clinical characteristic features like skeletal abnormalities in the form of bone deformity and pain, weak muscles and loose joints, ligament flexibility may also be affected. Our spine is made of bones, muscles, tendons and ligaments. Defective formation of these lead to curved spine, small stature. Apart from this, there could be bowing of long bones of arms and legs, hearing loss due to thickening of spongy bone. Some have hyperplastic callus formation, that is large amount of callus formation. This occurs during healing of fractures. This can occur even in the absence of fracture. This callus formation is so much superabundant that it mimics osteosarcoma. Children may show larger than normal head, triangular shaped face like an inverted triangle with broad temples and tapering chin. A deformed chest and spine is also often seen. Numerous fractures can occur in the childhood and they heal, but this leads to a deformed body by the time the person becomes an adult. Then there are extraskeletal manifestations that is not involving the bone, where the functions of the cardiovascular system and respiratory system are affected. Example, they may be valvular insufficiency, atrial septal defects, recurrent pneumonia, and all these seen clinically in the form of difficulty in breathing. Collagen defect in blood vessel walls causes the person to bruise easily. They may show a tendency for capillary bleeding. Another common feature is the occurrence of pale blue sclera. Note that this is not always present. The sclera is the white outer coating of the eye and again it is made of collagen fibers. Here in OI, sclera is abnormally thin. Due to this, the veins in the underlying choroid tissue show through it, giving it the blue color. Oral manifestation seen in teeth as dentinogenesis imperfecta, that is dentine formation is imperfect. The integrity or wholeness of the teeth is affected and this can be seen in the form of teeth that are weak, brittle or discolored. An interesting fact has been found that several genetic disorders that disturb the bone also affect the dentine but not the enamel and this is because they are both similar in their composition. Both bone and dentine are composed of an organic matrix rich in type 1 collagen. When we look at the way in which they are formed, during osteogenesis, osteoblast and in dentinogenesis, odontoblast, first secrete this non-mineralized matrix. Then from the surrounding vascular network, calcium and phosphate ions move into this matrix and mineralize it. Coming back to the main topic, OI can be hereditary type 
inherited from the parent and this can be in the form of autosomal dominant inheritance and autosomal recessive inheritance. You can pause and read more about this below. This congenital type is also known as Rolex disease and named after Dutch anatomist William Rolex who gave the name or who coined the name as osteogenesis imperfecta. Then there is the non-hereditary type which develops due to random gene mutation. One day the gene undergoes a sudden change and stops working normally. And this can happen any time in life, in utero, in childhood, in adolescence. Fractures during the neonatal period are rare. In childhood, fractures can occur on falling from a standing position or when being picked up or when participating in high intensity physical activity. In adolescence, the frequency of fractures usually decline after puberty. The specific symptoms and physical findings associated with OI have huge variations and are different in each person. Even among individuals in the same family, it can be mild or severe. The age of onset of fractures varies from person to person. Some may not experience any bone fractures or only a few fractures. Others may experience multiple fractures. There are many variants of OI. Based on clinical features and severity, four main types are Type 1, Type 2, Type 3 and Type 4. Type 1 is the mildest form. Type 2 is the perinatal lethal. Perinatal means seen around the time of birth, that is immediately before or after birth. This is lethal, that is death can occur in utero at birth or infancy. And the cause is respiratory failure, small thorax, rib fractures, pneumonia and all of this assumed to be due to collagen related abnormalities of lung tissue. Type 3 is the most severe with progressive deforming. Children may live only until around the age of 10. Type 4 is the moderately severe. Both 3 and 4 are associated with dentinogenesis imperfecta. People with type 1 have a normal lifespan. People with type 4 live till adulthood but may have a slightly shortened lifespan. Type 1 is the most common form of OI. Fractures often begin with the ability to walk and decrease after puberty. There is minimal bone deformity and the stature is nearly normal. Type 4 incur dozens of long bone fractures, but most are able to walk without assistance. May have mild to moderate bone deformity. Type 1 dentinogenesis imperfecta is rare. In type 4, it is always associated dentinogenesis imperfecta. There is no cure for OI. Diagnosis is based on symptoms and confirmed by blood test and bone density test. Blood test is done to check for gene mutation, bone density to measure the mineral levels in bone and this is done using low dose x-rays across the body. Treatment is essentially managing symptoms, improving quality of life to help people live more independently and this can be done by Care of fractures, orthopedic surgery, medications can be given to treat pain. People with lung problems can be given oxygen. Bisphosphonates are used especially in children. They slow the loss of existing bone. Hearing aids can be used for hearing loss. Dental treatment for tooth chipping, color changes or decay with crowns, fillings, etc. Using walkers and canes to improve mobility. Physiotherapy to increase strength and flexibility, wearing braces on the legs to support weak muscles and keep joints properly aligned. And last but not the least, eating a nutritious diet full of calcium and vitamin D. Thank you for watching. Do leave a comment, give this video a thumbs up and share. If you want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can also click on any of these links given here to watch a video of your choice.